So again, I want to talk a little bit about our experience in moving to Saipan. So we we started off. We were we were really really concerned about the government of the United States and the future of the United States. We didn't really quite know what the future was going to hold for us or especially for our children. Um, you know, we had a lot of concerns about about that, and um, you know, so th those concerns were really a driving factor for why we decided to leave the country. So we started working on our house, getting it ready to be sold. And um, we were doing a lot of research in the countries, and uh, we basically looked into every single country that we could think of, and we came across New Zealand, and New Zealand was perfect. New Zealand was it. We were locked in. We were going to go to New Zealand. We learned everything we could about New Zealand, the Maori culture, the whole everything. Jobs, houses, towns, things to do, people to, you know, we were talking to people over there, networking. And then, and then COVID hit. And when COVID came along, it, sh it locked everything down. It shut down New Zealand still to this day. New Zealand's locked down. So it, it really kind of opened our eyes to maybe New Zealand isn't for us. And we started looking into some other places and my wife had found um, the Marianas Islands. I, I knew it was near Guam and that's about it. And so we started looking into it and um, found out there wasn't any border restrictions and, and we uh, we started everything that we found about Saipan. We really, really loved, we enjoyed. And we were like, okay, so let's, let's do Saipan then. And now he's very overwhelmed. <laughs> Trying to pack up all the stuff that we want to keep. <laughs> Look, my side's nice and clean. Sort of. What are we packing for? Plane. Packing for the plane. How many bags? Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the joys of packing. Again. Again. Over and over and over again. <clears throat> because you always need something that you've already packed. Are you ready? You ready for a plane? What you got? A suitcase. A suitcase. Really started ramping up, fixing our house, and we um, we started giving away all of our stuff, which was interesting. Giving away your stuff is trying to sell everything that you have and trying to sell everything that you own is difficult. Um, we found it much easier to just give it away. We gave away a lot of stuff. Yeah, we're about to move all of our furniture out of the house and we are going to be in an empty house. <laughs> look at our living room. This is what our living room used to look all nice. Now it looks like just a bed in the corner. This is our room. And like always, this room is a disaster. Thank you. 
back. We'll just do it the huh? Do you want to go we'll this way with it, it and through here? You know what? Let's, I'm gonna just pull it right back around here. Okay. You know what? I kind of fall through there. Let's more. Here, I got this. Right. And it gets too heavy. That's so much gas. Oh yeah, I know. That's too pounds. Here, love. We gotta squeeze it out. Squeeze. Help me squeeze the air out. So when we put our house on the market, it was, I think the second people that came through bought it. It sold fast. It sold within just a, a two weeks uh, from, from the day that we had the sign out to papers being signed was two, maybe three weeks. Like, well, we just had four showings as we're selling our house and now we're considering going into an Airbnb. <laughs> Four people have looked at our house to buy it. That's crazy. What do you think? <laughs> That's you, huh? <laughs> our house is officially on the market and we've had all kinds of people asking about it. They just want the closing cost cover, which I don't know where that, what it involves. I don't know. We do want this, so it's. I don't want to lose our chance just because of $6,000. We, if we accept this offer, we're needing a breakdown of fees and like walkaway price and things like that. Broker commissions. just got through signing every last bit of paperwork required by our realtor and we have officially sold our house there's nothing more to do we've got everything moved out we're living in a hotel we've got all our bags packed and we are going to be on our way very soon She's saying bullshit.
Won't be long before we are in Well, I guess she refuses to leave the house. Well, this is our last day at the house. Our final day. Celeste is still inside crying because she doesn't want to leave. Or be on camera, I don't know. What do you guys think? Bummed and excited. <laughs> we're moving to Saipan. Yep. <laughs> this is the last time that we're ever going to see this property ever again. Any last final words? Anyone? The next adventure begins. <laughs> it's very bittersweet, baby. All right, this is our last time driving out of this property. We can never return. We are officially done with all of this. I love you, baby. I love you, baby. And next thing I knew, we were homeless and living in a hotel in Etowah. So we uh, started looking at flights and, and we didn't want to book flights until we had the money because it cost $11,000 to fly here, all of us. And uh, so we needed the money first. And so we were in the hotel and um, we found out our flight was going to be from Tennessee to Chicago, from Chicago to Hawaii, from Hawaii to Guam, and then from Guam to Saipan. Okay, so we just checked into the hotel number one. This is too dark. Here. This one. Trying to figure out the lights. Okay, well, look. All right, so we just checked into hotel number one yep. on our trip to Saipan. <laughs> and we all desperately need showers and food and, food. and shave. Food. food. I eat you. Let's give a tour. Oh, that's a good what what is this? Is the bathroom? What's the first thing you're doing? I'm taking a bath. I'm taking a bath. I'm gonna run. What about the water. you? Dad, do you like coffee? Look. Yeah. Okay, look, coffee. I want some coffee. Right, she's up there. I'll get my coffee. Okay. Hotel number one. Look, the look lovey. <laughs> Hotel number one. Ooh. We're still in Etowah. Stupid Etowah. <laughs> Hotel number one. 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 <laughs> oh my god. Is that just for you? It's your very own tablet. Lisa, can you put that on and charge it? What do you think, lovey? Look at me. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, Daddy. You're very welcome. Say thank you, Mommy. Say thank you, Mommy. Thank you, Mama. You're welcome, Mommy. So we worked our way down to Udawal and got ready to board the plane. Um, that, was, that was completely interesting. Thank God Heather had everything already figured out because we were bringing guns and 17 bags of stuff. It was a lot. final hotel. Tomorrow we'll be getting on a plane. Really? Jesus Christ.
Christ. So when we landed in Chicago, the gate that we landed at was, and where we had to depart from, damn dogs in the background. So when we landed in O'Hare Airport, our departure gate was way on the other side of the airport. So we had to haul all of us and all of our bags all the way through one of the most crowded airports that there that there is and when we got there we found out that you had to have some kind of a special bracelet um, before you could board that showed uh, that was in compliance with the COVID restriction somehow and we uh, we didn't have that and so we almost got stopped right there but um, Fortunately, the lines were so long, nobody knew about all this, so everybody was on their phones trying to go online and fill out the, all the forms and all the requirements and upload your ID and all this other crap right there in the airport, all of us. Me and my wife were both on our phones trying to figure this out, and we finally got it done and got our, got our bracelets, and then we, we got on. And what a sigh of relief that was. That was, the Chicago was probably the worst. Ooh. Trying to get through Orlando Airport into Honolulu. These stupid things. <laughs> Had to do our health screening. <clears throat> Kids, you got anything to say? This is tiring. <laughs> And then we flew, I don't know, eight hours or something like that to Hawaii, straight to Hawaii. And flying over Hawaii, oh man, it was beautiful. Hawaii was beautiful. I've never been there before, but Hawaii was amazing. And, you know, we landed at the airport. We had no time to do anything because, again, our departure <laughs> flight was, again, something like 45 minutes. Again, five hours earlier than the time it's been here in
so we, we basically got off the plane, walked over to the, the line for Guam, and stood there for 45 minutes looking outside at Hawaii. Hey, look Where at the are teammate. we? Honolulu. Where are we going? Somewhere. We're um, going to Guam. Look. We're on our way to Guam. And next thing I knew, we were on the plane and another seven hour flight to Guam. Okay, so we just boarded our flight from Honolulu to Guam. It'll probably be about eight hours of flying. We're almost there, almost on our way to Saipan. Um, we did opt for first class, and first class was amazing. You could lounge back, you could, I mean, they served, it was, it was, first class was, I highly recommend if you ever can fly first class to do so. It, it made the whole experience a lot better than it, than it probably could have been. <laughs> but, um, we, uh, so we landed in Guam, and Guam, we had a 10 hour layover. 10 hours of not being able to do anything until your next flight. And we didn't know anything about Guam. We couldn't leave, we didn't know anything about it. So we decided to stay there at the airport and just sleep there at the airport. And we walked around a little bit, got some food before things closed and slept for 10 hours at our gate. Well, we're here in Guam. As you can see, the Guam airport, it's really busy. We got, how long's our layover, baby? 10 hours. <laughs> 10 hours, we're waiting on our next flight. So here we are in the airport, just living it up. No one knows how to eat the Raymonds with chopsticks. <laughs> I gotta go get some. <laughs> See? Shut myself up. <laughs> and then next thing I know, we were 
boarding the plane for Saipan, and it was we landed in Saipan at like four in the morning. All right, this is our last flight, leaving Guam, and we're going to be going into where? Saipan. Should be a quick flight to the small little island of Saipan. Yep. Almost 40 hours of travel with with everything, and to be honest with you, it went off without a hitch. So I was really, really, really happy. Not we didn't have any any real major problems. That little hiccup in Chicago, but we had, uh, you know, we got that solved pretty quick. Um, and as we're going through customs at the airport in Saipan, we. Um, we had to load all of our bags and all of us and some of the other people that were along with us showing up in Saipan to go into quarantine. We had to be quarantined for five days here in Saipan and pass the COVID test. So we hopped on this shuttle and we were on our way up to the North Island of Saipan at a place called the Marianas Resorts. And that's where we did our quarantine, which was interesting. Hey everyone, so you may or may not know, my family and Von Mirror Productions has relocated to the beautiful island of Saipan in the Pacific. And I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about our quarantine experience and show you where we're staying and explain the process we went through. So I wasn't able to get footage of our trip from the airport to here because our batteries went dead from 30 plus hours of travel. So let me just explain everything up to this point. Well, after we landed, we went through customs and were shuttled to the Marianas Resorts Hotel where we had to be COVID tested, which sucked. But the locals were very kind and very helpful with that process. Then we and our 17 bags of luggage were driven via a four-wheeler side-by-side to our temporary little cottage. Let me tell you, this place is awesome. Let's take a quick little tour so you can see this place. So this is our little cottage here in Saipan. Let me give you a tour and you can see how we're living here in quarantine. Come on in, check this out. Feels good in here. This is our little living area. Check out our kitchen. Look at our kitchen. <laughs> Here's the bathrooms. You can see me in the reflection filming. Ooh. Look at our awesome bathroom and our awesome shower. And this is what we're staying in while we're in quarantine. It's pretty cool, it's not bad. Say hi. Stressed out mom zone. Yes, this is the stressed out mom zone. The little one just enjoying it. All of our food. <laughs> Let's show you. We've got the sinks here, and then we have the bathroom toilet here. Two totally different rooms. This black thing, I'm not entirely sure what it is. I don't know if it's a urinal or if you wash your hands in it. I don't know. We're not going to find out though. This is the kids' room. All messy. It actually was originally the master bedroom, but the bed was too hard. So we decided to not be in here. And we stuck the kids in here. But it's really nice. Let me show you our room. We just pushed the two beds together because these beds were way softer. So I guess that basically concludes the tour of our little cottage. Our life here in quarantine in Saipan. 
We have two more days yet to go. <laughs> so here we are in the backyard of our little cottage. And I'll show you the area that we're quarantined in because we cannot leave this spot. Did you just break something? <laughs> so we've got from this tree line all the way to here. That's as far as we can go. I'm going to show you a view of the ocean. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's the ocean way out there. Oh, I wish we could jump in it right now. Let's talk about the temperature and the weather. What does it feel like right now? Humid. <laughs> it's pretty humid. It's very hot here. It is. But that's the price you pay, you know, for moving away from a horrible country to a nice country. Look around. Smile. Can you do cross eyes? <laughs> yeah, so I'm sitting here in Saipan and I'm being fanned like a like a king. Look, the, the leaves are so big. Look, compared to me, it's huge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really can't. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's wet. <laughs> okay, so this is as far as I can go with our quarantine process. We still have two more days. We've been here for three, and we still have just a few more to go. We've all passed our COVID tests, but... We still have to wait two more days. So I will do more videos later explaining the finalization process of our quarantine. So until then, we'll see you later. Peace. How's it going? You wanna grab everything? Yeah, you need it. Thank you. All right. Uh, you guys can just leave the tray outside. The tray? Okay. I'll come back. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. All right. So here's an update on our quarantine situation. We just got through doing our last final test where they stick the swab all the way up your nose. That was fun. Um, I got a little bit of footage of it, but of course we were asked not to film. <laughs> So now we wait on the last final results and then we're gonna get a ride out of here and go on to our house. Last day in quarantine. So this is it, we're packing all our stuff up because we are going to be out of quarantine. Thank God. Once we, once we finished our quarantine, we found a little, uh, an Airbnb in a place called the Fetna. The rest is history, here we are, we're in Saipan. Starting a whole new life, a whole new chapter, a whole new everything. This is our Airbnb, the winner's residence. This is our first grocery store in Saipan. Weird stuff. 
This is the Raymond Capital right here. We have... Look at all these Raymonds. The first time touching the Pacific Ocean. She said it wiggles. Does it wiggle, lovey? There it is, Maokai's in. So pretty looking down through there. Not a single person out here. <laughs> she doesn't know what to do. What do you think, Lavi? Slow down. Oh yeah, here we are. Finally. In the Pacific Ocean. Here, here baby, watch your nose. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful, be careful. Okay. Yep. You have to go slow. <laughs> yeah. She's so excited. I can't believe we're in Saipan. It just goes to show when you carve your own path and you make your own way and you do the work and you work hard, you can achieve just about anything. 